Good morning here I come with a new video today our topic of discussion is human skeleton and what are the mnemonics to learn and remember it easily. Ok let's start with the topic. Here you can see the clip which covers all bones and make a whole skeleton. Our skeleton system is made of bones and it gives a shape to our body. There are various types of bones in our body. Some are long like the bones in the forearms and thighs. Some are short like the bones in the wrist, foot, ears. An adult human being has 206 bones in his body. Hard and strong bones surround delicate vital organs and protect them. Our heart and lungs are protected by a cage made of bones called rib cage. Our brain sits inside the heart skull made of strong bones. The backbone or the spine protects the spinal cord which is the extension of the brain and is extremely delicate. We can stand, sit and maintain different posture because skeleton system provides a rigid structure and it helps to hold all organs in place. The foremost thing we should know about is what are bones. Bones are rigid bars that are made up of connective tissues. These are living tissues that are capable of growth and perform a vast number of functions. These are the reservoirs of about 99% of the calcium in our body. Bones despite their hardness, are very much living tissue. They have greater regenerative power than any other tissue of the body except blood. It can be subjected to disease and can be fractured. It can mold itself according to changes in stress and strain. After talking about the bone let's come on to the main point. What is a human skeleton? It is a framework of joined bones. Helps to stand straight, to move, to perform any physical activity, and also aids in breathing. The adult skeleton consists of 206 bones. When we are born, we have a greater number of bones, about 275 but as time passes, many bones fuse together and decrease in count. Also at birth, there is a greater amount of cartilage, which is afterward replaced by bones. Over a period of about 7 years, each bone in our body is slowly replaced by a new bone. This happens by a process called cartilaginous ossification which involves the replacement of hyaline cartilage with bone the skeleton consists of a greater part of compact bone. This bone consists of a large number of tree-like structures called haversian systems or osteans. Osteon is the functional unit of bones. Composition of bones. Bones usually comprise bone cells and extracellular matrix. Here we shortly describe these as bone cells are further divided into osteoblast osteocyte and osteoclast whereas extracellular matrix compresses collagen fiber and inorganic minerals. Osteoblasts are bone forming cells. They secrete bone matrix. They are responsible for the mineralization of the bone tissue. When osteoblasts are trapped in the matrix which they have secreted, then they become osteocytes. Osteoclasts are bone reabsorbing cells responsible for demineralization of bone. An important role in remodeling bone. Also, recycle the matrix. See collagen fibers are the most abundant protein in the human body. It is a kind of fibrous connective tissue. They function as a glue in the body i.e. holds together all the body structures. Inorganic mineral crystals form rod-shaped crystals. These mineral crystals are responsible for the hardness, rigidity, and great compressive strength of bones comparable to iron and steel. The human skeleton comprises 206 bones as follows. This summary will illustrate you about distribution of bones equally. The axial skeleton is made up of the 80 bones within the central core of your body. This includes bones in your skull, cranial and facial bones, ears, neck, back, vertebrae, sacrum, and tailbone, and rib cage, sternum and ribs. The skull consists of the bones that form the head. The skull is made up of cranial bones, 
bones that surround and protect the brain, and facial bones, bones that form the eye sockets, nose, cheeks, jaw, and other parts of the face. An opening at the base of the skull is where the spinal cord connects to the brain. The hyoid bone and ear ossicles are also included in it. Ethmoid bone a square bone at the root of the nose, forming part of the cranium, and having many perforations through which the olfactory nerves pass to the nose. Sphenoid bone a compound bone which forms the base of the cranium, behind the eye and below the front part of the brain. It has two pairs of broad lateral wings and a number of other projections, and contains two air-filled sinuses. Each facial bone has its own unique anatomy, characteristics, and functions. The names of the 14 facial bones are inferior nasal concha, two of them, lacrimal bones, two, mandible, maxilla, two, nasal bones, two, palatine bones, two, vomer, and zygomatic bones, or zygoma. 2. Hyoid bone a U-shaped bone in the neck that supports the tongue. Ear ossicles The middle ear consists of the tympanic membrane and the bony ossicles called the malleus, incus, and stapes. These three ossicles connect the tympanic membrane to the inner ear allowing for the transmission of sound waves. The next part of the axial skeleton is the sternum. The sternum is a partially T-shaped vertical bone that forms the anterior portion of the chest wall centrally. The sternum is divided anatomically into three segments, manubrium body xiphoid process. The sternum connects the ribs via the costal cartilages forming the anterior rib cage. The next part of the axial skeleton comprises ribs. The ribs form the main structure of the thoracic cage protecting the thoracic organs, however, their main function is to aid respiration. There are 12 pairs, the true ribs are the ribs that directly articulate with the sternum with their costal cartilages, they are the first seven ribs. The false ribs are the ribs that indirectly articulate with the sternum, as their costal cartilages connect with the seventh costal cartilage, by the costochondral joint, they are the eighth, ninth, and tenth ribs. The floating ribs are the last two pairs of human ribs that have no attachment to the sternum. The vertebral column, also known as the spinal column, is the central axis of the skeleton in all vertebrates. The vertebral column provides attachments to muscles, supports the trunk, protects the spinal cord and nerve roots, and serves as a site for hemopoiesis. Vertebrae are the 26 individual bones that interlock with each other to form the spinal column. The vertebrae are numbered and divided into regions, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, and coccyx. The appendicular skeleton is comprised of the upper and lower extremities, which include the shoulder girdle and pelvis. The shoulder girdle and pelvis provide connection points between the appendicular skeleton and the axial skeleton to where mechanical loads transfer. As you can see clearly from the picture the shoulder girdle is composed of the clavicle and the scapula, which articulates with the proximal humerus of the upper limb. Four joints are present in the shoulder, the sternoclavicular, SC, acromioclavicular, AC, scapulothoracic joints, and glenohumeral joint. The pelvic girdle is a basin-shaped complex of bones that connects the trunk and the legs, supports and balances the trunk, and contains and supports the intestines, the urinary bladder, and the internal sex organs. The human body's upper and lower limbs include elements of the shoulder and hip girdles, often referred to as upper and lower limbs, respectively. The arms and legs are connected by the torso or trunk. Here is a description of this. The humerus is a long bone in the arm that runs from the shoulder to the elbow. It connects the scapula and the two bones of the lower arm, the radius, and ona, and consists of three sections. The radius or radial bone is one of the two large bones of the forearm, the other being the ona. It extends from the lateral side of the elbow to the thumb side of the wrist and runs parallel to the ona. The ulna is the longest, thinnest bone of the forearm. It articulates proximally with the trochlea of the humerus and with the head of the radius. Distally it articulates with the ulnar notch of the radius and with an articular disc that separates it from the carpal bones. The ulna is usually slightly longer than the radius, but the radius is thicker. The carpal bones are eight irregularly shaped bones located in the wrist region. These bones Connect the distal aspects of the long bones of the forearm, radius and ulna, to the proximal aspects of the metacarpal bones. The carpal bones are organized in two rows, proximal and distal. A 
Metacarpus is a group of five bones of the hand between the phalanges and the carpus. Even though the metacarpal bones are small, they are classified as long bones since they have the structural characteristics of long bones. Each metacarpal bone consists of a shaft, distal head, and a wide proximal base. In the hind limb the femur is your thigh bone. It's the longest, strongest bone in your body. It's a critical part of your ability to stand and move. Your femur also supports lots of important muscles, tendons, ligaments, and parts of your circulatory system. The tibia is the shin bone, the larger of the two bones in the lower leg. The top of the tibia connects to the knee joint and the bottom connects to the ankle joint. Although this bone carries the majority of the body's weight, it still needs the support of the fibula. The fibula is joined to the head of the tibia by ligaments and does not form part of the knee. The patella is a small bone located in front of the knee joint, where the thigh bone, femur, and shin bone, tibia, meet. It protects the knee and connects the muscles in the front of the thigh to the tibia. The tarsus consists of seven bones that make up the posterior aspect of the foot talus, calcaneus, cuboid, navicular, and three caneiforms. The tarsal bones can be divided into the hindfoot, talus and calcaneus, and midfoot, cuboid and caneiforms. The navicular is the intermediate bone between these two groups. The metatarsus of the foot consists of five long bones, which are called the metatarsals. Like the metacarpals of the hand, the metatarsals are comprised of a proximal base, a shaft, and a distal head. Mnemonic for cranial bones is step of sphenoid temporal ethmoid parietal occipital frontal. Mnemonic for carpal bones is she looks too pretty try to catch. Her scaphoid lunate triketral pisiform trapezium trepizius capitate hamate. Mnemonic for tarsal bones is try catching naughty cute. Chicks talus calcaneum navicular cuniform 3 cuboid. Here's our video. Hope so you like it. Thank you.